Split seconds can make a difference, can't they? You know what I'm talking about, don't you? If only the receiver had been at the right place at the right time. <laughs> if only they hadn't, you know, if the defender would have stumbled and fell before they intercepted the ball. Things would have been different. I know they would have, because I'm from Minnesota. That's when things happen. One fumble, then it's over with. Right? But not for the Packers. It's never over. So I've come to learn about the, the fans here. It's never over. You're determined no, no matter what. And it shows. The Packers are a good team. But timing sometimes can be everything. Timing can be everything. It was as we know. Sometimes it's not the right time for a certain job opening that comes up. You may be waiting for a while until the right time. Or the timing belt breaks in your car and your car is out of timing, right? And nothing really works well after that. It's got to be in time. Sometimes churches have times for everything, too. Not the right time to join the other churches and having a youth director, but now it is. Timing is everything. I look at these scripture readings and I, I look at Mark and I think, you know, Simon and Andrew, James and John, I wonder perhaps if they knew Jesus beforehand. You know what I mean? Jesus was in his 30s. I'm sure that he was proclaiming the gospel before this and inviting people to, to, to share with him. And, and people knew about Jesus before this event happened. It was like John in the wilderness. But don't you think it's interesting, as you read Mark, after John was arrested, now Jesus' time has come. John is out of the picture now. He had a great ministry, standing at the Jordan, baptizing and talking and preaching and, and letting people know about the good news of, of God come to, to earth in the person of Jesus Christ. And now John is taken out of the picture. Now, now is the time for Jesus to rise up and proclaim his message. It's almost as if Jesus went to his friends, Simon, Andrew, James, and John, and, and stood by the, by the water and said, okay, it's time. All this stuff I've been talking about and, 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 and teaching you about, now, now is the time. Come. And they came, of course. Timing is everything. We know in our own lives, timing can be a great, great thing. Jonah. Poor Jonah, called as a prophet, rejected the calling and <laughs> tried to escape because he felt the timing was right. Actually, there was no timing. I can't be a prophet. There's no way that I can do anything that you... I'm just a simple guy. Don't ask me to do this thing. But, you know, we know about the story about the fish in the three days and, and Jonah finally relenting after God pursues the calling with Jonah. Jonah finally accepts and says, okay, whatever you need me to do. I know in my experience that prophets really don't fare very well. I know that they aren't heard very well. As a matter of fact, they're pretty much ignored. I'm going on a, a quest, a journey that's probably going to go nowhere. Like the rest of the prophets, it seems like it's meaningless for me to do this. And be a, a person of economy, you want to get the best bang for your buck. Why would you want to invest yourself in something you know is not going to work? It's going to fail. Well, does it really fail? Keep that question in your mind. So Jonah goes through with his calling with God. And surprise, surprise, as we know, Jonah's one of the few prophets is actually successful in his first time out this sinful city Nineveh of all people the Assyrians what they're not even Israelites they're of a different culture different race and yet a few words from Jonah a few things from Jonah from God through Jonah and they turn right around and repent put on sackcloth and change their lives around. How interesting is that? And of course, Jonah, expecting the worst, doesn't know how to handle that. He's already programmed to fail. Nope, not this time. All lights, uh, lights go, you're ready to go. But Jonah doesn't know what to do with himself. Of course, we know that he 
sits under a tree and he weeps and mourns and he's all bummed out because, you know, how come they can, you know, how come you show favor to them? They should just be wiped off with the face of the earth. And God says, you know what? I'm God. I, I can do whatever I want. And people are being true to me. And that's the lesson to be learned. That you never know. The timing was right for these Assyrians to turn their lives over. And no one is beyond my care. I don't just cater to the Israelites. I care for everyone, even the Assyrians. Whoa, that's a big pill to swallow. In our own lives, we, we pray and we think God's on our side. And, and oftentimes, God is on all sides, helping all peoples. Sometimes it doesn't seem like it. Sometimes it seems like it's the opposite of what God wants. And yet God is still working. And we know in our own lives, in our own small ways, that we proclaim the gospel of Christ, that things do happen, not maybe immediately like they did for Nineveh, people of Nineveh, but over time. We as witnesses, we as prophets in our own rights, don't often see results right away. And sometimes we think this is a failing mission. This is just walking uphill nonstop. And yet, there are glimmers of hope. There are glimmers of God's presence in our lives. There are glimpses of wondrous things that sometimes we can't even fathom. Things that turn out differently than we ever thought possible. But in faith, we step out to make things happen. In faith, we follow God, and God is faithful to us. And sometimes we need eyes to see. Sometimes we need ears to hear the pulse of God in our veins. The feeling that God has never abandoned us for anything, for anyone. We continue the work of Christ in our midst. We have an annual meeting coming up. But I didn't notice that already. Yeah, it's an annual meeting at the service in Parish Hall. There's food there. And we, we come together to talk about ministry. We talk about our faithful journeys through our financial budgets, through our ministries of our committees, of things that are going on in our lives. We come together and talk. We may even vote on a few things. And we pray that we continue God's mission the best that we know how, the best that we can, with honest and respectful language. We come together as people of God for this journey that is not a failure, that is not meaningless, but continues to grow. As Mr. Schultz had these kids go and find other people, and then they would find other people. And geometrically, it, it, would, it would increase. And there's not a lot of push, there's not a lot of hurrahs, but it happens. Sometimes quietly, in the pieces and the restfulness of our hearts. Jesus asks us, in this kingdom of God, he asks the Israelites to repent, to turn away. For some of you, it was difficult for some of us. It's very difficult to do. We keep our eyes locked on. We remember our baptism sometimes daily. We have to remind ourselves to kill the old Adam in the waters of baptism, as Luther would say, to become a new creation, a new Adam. Repentance for Jesus meant turning away from the social and political agendas that were driving Israel crazy in ruinous wars. Repent, change that behavior. Secondly, calling Israel to turn back to a true loyalty to Yahweh, their God, in whatever that means for them. They have the history, they have the knowledge, they have the traditions to fall back on, to learn. They have now Christ as a witness, as a true revelation of God in their midst. If they only open their eyes, if they only open their ears, if they only open their hearts to this one who calls himself the Christ, who followers will flock and hundreds will follow. And over centuries, people of faith still come, still follow, 
still learn, still witness to this great news of Christ. Jonah had it rough. Jesus had it rougher. And yet, the message is still true. That God's timing is our timing. Our timing is God's timing. However that works. That for everything, God is there just as God has always been there for us. In our offices, at our homes, at our annual meetings, in our sanctuary here, wherever we may be, God calls us and we listen and we follow. And sometimes as we get older, we're able to follow in more limited ways. We can't do the things we used to do. And yet, even in a glimmer of an, of an, of an eye, a smile that goes across the face. The handing, holding of a hand to a person in need speaks volumes to all of us. God's timing. It is time now to continue our journey to remember our baptism. Challenge ourselves. God is with us.